now. We're going to talk about the economy, the accelerating world events with the premier trends forecaster joining us via video Skype right now. He is Gerald Salente for the balance of the hour. And there's so much I want to get into. I mean, there is so much uh, that I want to break down. They look like they're about to dump Biden right now. Uh, that's the writing on the wall. We'll get his take on that. Uh, we have got uh, just amazing stuff. Federal courts ruling that cell phone tracking is legal, just throwing out the Fourth Amendment. The, they're saying they're going to raid the Uruguayan. They're saying the Ecuadorian, excuse me, the Ecuador, teleprompter free, folks. The, uh, the uh, embassy, which is just incredibly illegal because they're going to try to give him um, Political asylum, just amazing the type of evil we're seeing. Ecuador grants asylum to WikiLeaks Assange. All of that uh, and all the big articles. In fact, I left it in the studio from last night. Will you guys bring me all the financial crash stuff? You've been called a pessimist porn dealer, Gerald Salente of the Trends Journal, for predicting with precision everything that's happening. The wars, the Tea Party years before it came. Uh, the attacks on small businesses, the rebellion, the meltdown of derivatives, that, that, that we were really in a depression and never left the recession. All of that confirmed are saying, get the banks ready for collapse. Uh, you know, the elites are all buying gold up. That was in the news. Soros, the rest of them. Literally everything you've said, but you don't get, you don't get praised by the corporate prostitutes, you invented that word, for telling the truth. You get even more demonized as it all unfolds. So, so you've told us what's was coming, tell us, and it's come true, tell us what's coming now, Gerald Salente. What's coming now, unfortunately, looks like our worst scenario forecast that we've made recently, and that's the first great war of the 21st century. And people refuse to put the pieces together. Whether it's what going on in Syria is very clear, this is a, a move to limit the power of Iran and Hezbollah. You know, people forget that Israel lost against Lebanon in, the, in that last war. And one of the reasons why was they were getting armaments from Iran and Syria. The other issue, of course, is when you move beyond that, there's a revolution going on in Yemen. And they're very concerned because Yemen backs up to Saudi Arabia, which, as everyone knows, is the greatest oil producer on the planet. And the people there are very unhappy. And I know that this may sound contrary to all those fairy tales that were all taught as little boys and girls. They don't like the king. The king. How about calling him a dictator? Oh, no, he's a king. Hey, ladies, you want to free Afghanistan? Right here all that all the time. You can't drive a car in, in, in the kingdom. So you have a revolution going on there that's spilling over. Bahrain is ready to go up in flames. Greece is cooked. You have an unemployment rate of over 25% um, just officially, and then youth unemployment over 50%. You see what's going on in Spain. They don't report the millions of indignados that are taking to the streets to, it's, it's turned back. You know how I, how I talk about, Alex, that the timelines are parallels to the crash of 29, the Great Depression, the currency wars, trade wars, world war, the panic of 08, the Great Depression slash Great Recession, currency wars are going on, the trade wars and world wars, Spain, to just play back into that, it's a replay almost of the 1930s. Just the names and the situations have changed. The people are in Franco era depression levels. Oh, and then over there in France. Yeah, they just got a new president over there. And you read the language in the toilet paper of record, the New York Times, the self-proclaimed paper of record. They have a little story in there about the riots going on in France. And do you know who's writing? Hey, those people from when they used to, remember those French used to take over Algeria, Morocco, and then all those people came over to France? Yeah, them. And you know who them is? Them are the 50% of the youth unemployment demographic. It's unemployment worldwide. You know my saying. 
When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. They're losing it around the world. The war has begun. You, I read your website. And I see what you're posting on there about the hollow point bullets. We all know about the National Defense Authorization Act, about all the armaments going into our military police, because now they've both become one with the National Defense Authorization Act and the repeal of the 1878 Kame Positatis Act, Passe Comitatis Act that allows the military to take over police duties. So yes, the whole thing is collapsing. And now, of course, we got Iran. Got to go after Iran. And what are the reports out? They're re they're re I'm not making this up. This is coming out of Israel. They're preparing the people for a 30-day war? What psychopath came up with this idea? 30 days? Oh, you could put a timeline on it, huh? They're nuts. They're out of this. They're out of their minds, and they're taking the people to war. In the meantime... Let's go look at some economic data. Oh, China. You know what China's export numbers were last month? How about 1% growth? Virtually nothing. Their, their, their imports were only 4%. You look at Brazil, they just announced a $66 billion stimulus program. The real is crashing. The Indian rupee is in the toilet, and they're trying to stop people from buying gold. Oh, and you mentioned that Soros and Paulson are buying up tons of gold. Oh, but they're brilliant. When Salenti says it, oh, he's a gloom and doomer. Oh, you can't eat gold. Oh, you can't eat gold? How about shoving this? Oh, no, I have to be clean. This is a, this is a chill. This Gerald, <laughs> speaking of that, let me throw this at you. Uh, as you know, the Associated Press reporting, because I know you're a news hound, you'll know this, reported yesterday the Chinese government has suspended all purchases of U.S. stocks, saying the system can't be trusted. And just last week, they had articles admitting that the flash trading is such a manipulation, stealing billions a day, that you can't even trust the market. It's totally rigged. Only an imbecile. Only an not only an imbecile, only the people that would vote for Romney and Ryan or Biden and Obama are too stupid enough, too blind, and too ideological to admit the entire system is rigged. The last time we're talking about the LIBOR scandal. Oh, what's a LIBOR? Oh, yeah, what's a LIBOR? It only controls all the money that's being created and interest rates oh that's all it is and it was rigged and the, and as you pointed out the the uh, high the high frequency trading yeah the game is rigged e trade how about f trade <laughs> oh here's another oh, one. Oh, we got to go to break gerald salente we'll give you his website we come back write it down get the trends alerts free there on his site or subscribe we'll be back Jones here with a very important announcement for Truth Seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find at InfoWarsShop.com, None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com. But here is the hard copy uh, of it. Uh, um, it has Christ whipping the money changers, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, and others on the cover. Uh, going back to Gerald Salente in the short segment, long segment coming up. Again, you read your latest issue that just came out a few weeks ago. A couple of articles you've been gracious enough to let us use are in our new free magazine that's coming out. 
Um, it's all happening. So the long and short of it, what do you expect to happen now that they're scurrying around themselves talking about a uh, very serious collapse? And what do they mean by a banking collapse? What would that look like, Gerald Salente? Well, what it's going to look like is you're going to, they're going to call a bank holiday if this thing continues to collapse. And we had wrote about that. We even had a link up of uh, Joe Biden campaigning for John the Slime Corzine. That's right, the former governor of New Jersey and senator of New Jersey, also in former head of the Goldman Sachs gang. Back in 2009, Biden was saying, it's there on YouTube, anybody could find it, that when the Obama administration got into office, the first thing the transition team was talking about was calling a bank holiday. And Biden repeats it. That's right, a holiday. It ain't no holiday. You can't get your money. Oh, and by the way, before I go on, speaking of John Corzine, did you see the headline today in the New York Times? You know, the self-proclaimed paper of record, more aptly called the toilet paper of record. No criminal case is likely in loss at Corzine firm. I want to read to you this little bit to show you toilet paper talk. A criminal investigation into the collapse of the brokerage firm, MF Global, and the disappearance of about $1 billion in customer money. Disappearance? What, did it just evaporate? Oh, no, but I'll go on. Disappearance. That's toilet paper talk so that you think it's legit. Of about one, uh, is now heading into its final stage without charges expected against any top executives. That's right, they'll get some low-level sap as stooge to take out, but here's where it gets good. After 10 months of stitching together evidence on the firm's demise, stitching together evidence, again, more toilet paper talk, on the, on the firm's demise, criminal investigators are concluding that chaos and porous risk control, porous risk controls at the firm rather than fraud allowed the money to disappear according to people involved in the case disappear it just disappeared 1.6 billion dollars disappeared and this you sets an incredible I mean, this sets an incredible new precedent. I'm seeing top money managers getting out of the market entirely, citing this and citing federal cases now saying no one's money is safe in banks anywhere, as you said last November when the heist first began. That's exactly it. Now, I want you, one more thing I want to read out of this. They're talking about the bet he made, a, a $6.3 billion wager. This is what brought the thing down, MF Global, on European sovereign debt proof fatal. And again, how could any imbecile, this guy is supposed to be so smart, bet on European sovereign debt as Europe, uh, the euro crisis is going into the toilet? The size of the bet was enough to wipe out the firm many times over. And as questions about Europe's health grew, a run on MF Global ensued. In the panic, the firm tapped customer money to stay afloat. It didn't tap customer money, it stole customer money out of our segregated accounts. But the toilet paper and the rest of the prostitutes, the CNN, the Cartoon News Network, the ABC clowns, the MSNBC shills, they refuse to go after the big guys because they're prostitutes and they bow down. Gerald, are they not in now actually aiding and abetting in the criminality when yes. they call stealing money, tapping? So if I rob my neighbors and the cops show up and I've, I've, I've robbed the neighbor, I say, I'm just tapping their account. Right, I'm and then money just disappeared out of their house. Hey, that computer you took, all this jewelry you, you robbed, it, it disappeared. Everything we said came true. Now you can go to trendsresearch.com and find the Trends Journal, or you can also go to trendsjournal.com, takes you to the same place. Invaluable info. I must read. Check it out today. Again, Gerald Salente joins us. I want to go through some of the economic news because, you know, 
we laugh and joke about this. He had a lot of money, six figures plus stolen from him. We'll leave it at that, Gerald Salente. But it wasn't stolen, it was uh, tapped. I mean, first they say in the same article, it disappeared, but then it was tapped. You know, It disappeared like into JP Morgan's pocket, as he and Max Kaiser said, uh, now uh, back in October, November. And now it's confirmed JP Morgan London got it. HSBC is in mainstream news, running uh, uh, drugs just like uh, Wachovia, Wells Fargo, in the hundreds of billions a year, uh, those guys, uh, running the torture aircraft, running the drug aircraft, uh, stealing people's pension funds, selling into the market stuff that they know is worthless crud, bragging about it. Those emails are out there, but they're just tapping it when they lie to an old lady and sell her fraud with Timberwolf. And now, we said this months before, you said it, we said it. I mean, it's not like we're even that smart. We're just not total idiot chump suckers who love being taken for a ride every day. You know, I mean, you know, you uh, rape me 10 or 15 times, I'm not gonna trust you anymore. That's why we're extremists, pessimists, poor and bad people. Uh, we talked about Zuckerberg and Facebook and the fact that even mainline groups were saying it was overvalued by 10 times at least. Some estimates were 20 times, but it was 10, 15, you know, there in that area, it varied. And, and of course, they were allowed to dump up front and then dump later. And uh, they're dumping it. It's totally illegal. But they sent Martha Stewart, and they're trying to get the owner of the Mavericks, who criticized Bush, who didn't engage in insider trading, clearly, they're going after them because, oh, look, we get the bad men. There's the bad man. There's the bad woman, but not the real crooks that make Bernie Madoff and Ken Lay look honest. What do you say about Facebook uh, here, Gerald Salente, and the fact that now the criminality is just parading around and the prostitutes, as you said, are saying the sky's the limit? I mean, I guess that's why judges think they can say no Fourth Amendment now, because the media will cover their, their evil wart-covered patoots. I mean, I mean, what is the end? Once corruption in history, as you know, reaches this festering uh, point when the pustule pops and, and, and just deluges us uh, in the scrofula stink, where are we going here? I'm ranting, I'm sorry. Well, on the Facebook issue, you know, we have trends in the news as part of the subscription for the Trends Journal. And when the IPO came out, I said, I'm not telling people how to invest. I don't give investment advice. I'm a forecaster. And I'm forecasting that this thing is going to dump out. And I would not put my money in it. And the reason is because it's all, you got to get advertising. And people use Facebook for what it is. You know, who looks at the advertising? People blast right by it. The other issue, of course, being it's a fad. It's not a trend. I wrote in trend tracking in 1996, what they're calling social networking, I call it techno-tribalism. It has much more richness than just BSing back and forth to people. So we knew it was a bust. Where is it all going? And as we look at, we talked about LIBOR. We're talking about all the criminality going on in all the different levels. You mentioned HSBC. You could go down the list, one fine after another, no one's head rolls, and it just keeps going. The fish rots in the head down. The entire system in the United States, as you look at it, is nothing more than a fish rotting within morality. How about that lovely war over there in Afghanistan? Hey, all you Obamanistas, remember when he had that troop surge? Obama, 30, Obama, Obama, Obama. Bravo, bravo. Yeah, what did today, a helicopter got shot down? What, another seven Americans dead? Oh, yeah, impressive progress, huh? Yeah, sure. Oh, what happened last week? Oh, you know, that transition military that you're putting in place? Yeah, they're killing our soldiers. How many guys got killed? Eh, what's a dozen or so? There were no senators' sons. Oh, and let me just digress a little bit. I love the latest episode of the presidential reality show. It was the perfect metaphor for America. Romney and Ryan standing in front of a mothballed battleship. Mothballs? Maybe that's what these guys are carrying around with them. Because it was the perfect metaphor. Two little chicken hawks talking tough with a decommissioned <laughs> ship that was at a state. Yeah. They stopped battleships before the end of World War II. And... They're the tough-talking guys, right? 
No one's talking about cutting the military. So as we're looking at the fish rotting from the head down, we talked about the military, we talk about the economy. Now, I'm a guy still living in the Bronx and of a different head. And I'd say to my buddy, Joey, listen, we're gonna go do a deal. Now here's what we're gonna do. And Joey says with the other guys, and all of a sudden Joey chirps up, Hey, hey, Gerald, come on, that's not honest, man. We're going to rip somebody off like that? I say, what are you, stupid? What's the matter with you? Look at this, stealing at the top. They're robbing us every day. They stuck your mother's house. She's out on the street. Your father ain't got a job. Your brother died in Iraq. You are, what are you, stupid? They're ripping us off at every level, and you're going to play it straight? All of society is rotting out because it's rotting from the head of Obama. It's rotted from the head of Bush and Cheney. It's rotten like Romney and Ryan. And you know how I say, Alex, I've been saying it for years since you've known me, that these guys that everybody's sucking up and bowing down to are nothing more than the class presidents and head of the student council. And now they follow their career path. It could not be clearer than with Paul, little high school altar boy Ryan. It's great. The altar boy and a guy that wears the magic underwear, the Mormon. It's perfect. It's right out of the presidential reality show. Paul Ryan voted by his classmates who are smarter than everybody else out there, his high school kids, as the brown noser of the year. I'm not making it up. It's there. The class president, a guy that never worked a day in his life, born on third base like Romney and thinks he hits a triple. And people clap like little children. All aboard. Next train to Auschwitz. That's where this country's going. Continue, my brother. You are laying it out. And I mean, where do you see it ending? Where do you see it going if we don't turn They're this around? They're going to declare martial law on the people. They're going to go after guys like you and me. They're going to go after everybody that speaks out and calls them out on their crap. What adult could believe this stupid, cheap show? Did you see Obama? When the hell does this guy work? He's been out on a campaign trail every day. Every four years, this is where you could find these guys. They'll be at Pete's Barbecue, sitting on a bale of hay. There's Obama in front of a whole bunch of rotted corn. Every four years, Freddie's Clam House, sitting there at, at Maggie's Diner, and the people buy this crap. They well, wait, well, wait, well, wait. For the first time, even businesses that don't like them for the business are telling them you're not welcome here, and they're getting ready to dump Biden, hoping that wakes people uh, back up. Uh, clearly, they've got all the signs on that front. So I do see an awakening happening. But you're right. The level of tyranny we will live under, as Thomas Jefferson said, is the exact amount we'll put up with. So now that they're so cornered like rats, you've said they implode the economy, then they start a war to distract everybody. But do you think that's going to work? I mean, even most of the yes. Israelis don't want a war. It will work. You should, you know, we sent out a trend alert. We wrote about Ryan in last year, in, you, you got it, last uh, uh, summer's Trends Journal, that whole one about direct democracy. And we had a thing, we even had, we even had Ryan's uh, weenie mobile. And we showed what a little nobody this guy is and why would anybody listen to this jerk who never did a damn thing in his life. And I love the term they give. Lawmakers. I don't need a lawmaker. Who made that? What, did you go to school for lawmaking? Anyway, well, it's like they're Moses or something. That's where that comes from. The great lawgiver. Yeah. And so here this guy, we wrote all about him. So we sent out a piece. We also had in that piece, remember that guy, when we wrote about the Wiener Mobile, we wrote about the other Wiener, Richard Wiener, the guy that got caught, you know, showing his stuff off on TV, on, on the Internet. We wrote about both of them. You should see, this is a year ago, people writing to us, canceling their subscriptions because we said what they didn't like about Ryan. We could go after Obama, they don't care. But you go after their ideologue, and boy, do they get tight. If you don't like their freak, 
There's something wrong with you. My freak is better than your freak. Oh, the Romney freak is better than the, than, the, than the Obama freak. How come you don't like my freak? It's a freak show. How could any adult look at this adolescent act that they call the presidential reality show and buy into it? It's a disgrace. Well said. Uh, shifting gears to the war front and other uh, areas that deal with that, Syrian rebels who've always been Al-Qaeda-led warn they will turn to Al-Qaeda if the West fails them. And they also say that our troops have to grow the opium or Al-Qaeda will get it. I mean, I guess now they'll need your daughters as well or Al-Qaeda will get them. Uh, you know, let the globalists have their way with them or, or, or Al-Qaeda will pill for them. Uh, continuing, Israel urges U.S. decision on Iran strike. Why not news? Now, here's another one. Israel minister warns of 30-day war with Iran. You mentioned Mentioned that at the start of the interview. Khomeini, Zionist regime will disappear from map. Israel military blast heard in southern city. Rockets believed to be falling. Seven American soldiers dead in Afghan chopper crash. They never get shot down. It's always a chopper crash. Yeah. Uh, continuing, uh, all of this is going on. And then the economic news, even Fox News runs the headline, the coming economic collapse and breaks down the numbers. Uh, Again, they've always known this because they're, they're imploding it to take over, but the fact that they're now admitting they're getting ready for a collapse, what's your time frame on that? I, mean, I know you're in generalities because no one knows exactly, but I mean, we're talking about this fall, next year. Uh, Max Kaiser says by next April. Because it then. Could happen, it, could happen, it could happen next week. Next, you see, they keep coming up with these schemes. Like, nobody knew about the $26 trillion that the Fed was pumping into the system. Nobody knew that they were rigging the rates and lying about with LIBOR to cover up the so damage. So it's all rigged. Banks. It's all rigged, but the, but, but the real economy so is the, dying. Yeah, so the timeline is really, really difficult to go on. But it is the, you know, you mentioned about, you know, how the media looks at me. You know, I know people in the media, and they all tell me. You know, and I have friends that, you know, that are agents and different uh, people, and they say... Every time they mention my name, they say, no, 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 you know, well, he, he scares people what he has to say. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't want to hear that, you know. He unsettles people. Oh, what do want to unsettle Obama. No, no, but uh, exactly. That's a badge of distinction and honor, a red badge of courage that I've, I've had Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, all with reporters here. To the point of now, I go, no, you can't come to a profile. I don't care if your editor said it's allowed to go out. People above that will kill it because they think not recognizing us keeps us down. It's the opposite. If you ever recognize us, it would hurt us. You are, you are like poison, garbage. You're the plague. I'm running from you. And the point is, is they always call back after they've been here and they go, you're right. They killed it from the corporate above the editors. And I'm like, exactly. So now I say, oh, the editor says you can come to town. I know it's a hit piece. I don't mind a hit piece. That helps me when you attack me. But I said, do this. Have your editor go above the corporate. Just so, and, and they go, oh my gosh, you're right. I had the Washington Post call me a few weeks ago, you know, this big writer. And I'm like, oh no, anything I've ever done gets published. And I said, okay, go ahead and write your article. He goes, it'll be this Sunday, you watch. Never was in the paper. Because again, they're scared and they act like we're the ones destroying confidence. No, 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 the Chinese government won't buy US stocks anymore because they know it's rigged. That's why we're not, the. in fact, I get this a lot. I see this about you, but I get this a lot. I'm causing the problems. I'm the reason there's a loss of confidence. Don't listen to that guy or we'll have a depression. Hey, I got news for you. Four years ago, we passed the Rubicon by every real economic standard. I've had countless economists on. I've researched it. We were in a depression four years ago, okay? Okay, I'm not doing it because I'm right. It's not Gerald's fault that he's right. We're trying to pull this country out of it. I like what Gerald says. Most people I know are trying to leave the country. It's global. You're not leaving, folks. It's going worldwide. I'm staying here. I'm fighting. Go ahead, Gerald. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're right on. Here, this is why, remember that? The prostitutes, da da the prostitutes, that's all they are. There's not a man among them, not a ma barely a man in Congress, nobody in the Senate, certainly nobody in the executive offices. It's a freak show, and the, look, all right, they're going to have the presidential debates. Did you see the lineup of prostitutes that get to ask them the questions? 
I mean, come on. One of them's Bob Schieffer. Bob Schieffer. You know what Bob Schieffer's last question and the Bush Kerry debate? I went no. berserk on it. He goes like this. He goes, you know, the three of us have something in common. We're all married to strong women. And I said, how the hell did you get into this thing? Who gives a damn? That was the last question. Of the there are a bunch of preening peacocks on the deck of the Titanic as it's listing. We're getting in lifeboats and they're telling us we're crazy as people are falling into the icy water. They are. It's like Rome is burning and they're going to press dinners, preening themselves and throwing out politically correct lines about women. You know, throw a throw a bone or something. Yeah. And you, you look at the list of who's asking these questions. I mean, it. it I mean, give me a break. Hey, let's get this straight, everybody. This is not a democracy. You got it? You're run by a mob. They like to call themselves Democrats and Republicans. Stay there. We got to go to break. Going back to Gerald Salente. Gerald, thank you so much for the time today. We got five minutes left here. I've asked a lot of the questions. What else is front and center on your radar right now that you'd like to tell people about? Well, the big one, of course, is what's going on in the Middle East. Another one. September 12th is going to be a big day. Uh, you asked me the timeline on collapse. That's the day that the German Supreme Court is supposed to rule on whether or not it's constitutional for the German government to be into the mechanisms, they call them, that are dumping all of this, funneling all this money in to bail out the troubled countries. If this, and it's also another element of that, that lawsuit that they'll be deciding. And the German Supreme Court ostensibly isn't a political, is not a politically rigged court like the one we have here. That's what they say. We'll see by their deeds. And the other issue is whether or not the Germans are actually going to lose their sovereignty as well as the rest of the Europeans by putting the banking structures completely into Brussels. So, how the Supreme Court of Germany rules on August, uh, excuse me, September 12th, on whether or not they could continue in these bailout funds, and these emergency funds, and these bond buying schemes, is going to determine the future of the Euro. Because if they say, which it is, by the way, unconstitutional as it is established by the German Constitution to continue like this Germany's the only one holding it up that means the whole Eurozone collapses number two again I am not giving financial advice just to make this clear my timeline on gold gold today is up about thirteen dollars as we speak Gold has to break above 1670, I believe. It's about 16, you know, 13 now. Uh, it has to go about 1670, and then the next hit up to that is 1750. Once it goes over 1750, it's back to the 2000 mark. And it could happen overnight, particularly if the psychopaths start a war with Iran. I've said it before, I'll say it again, and I will say it over and over again. This will begin World War III. The entire Middle East will explode. You know how now that Al-Qaeda is fighting against the Assad regime in Syria and on and on? They will all unite. Sunni, Shia, Alawite, Christian, they will all unite against Israel. Also up in our Twitter account, Real Alex Jones, we've got a link to a photo of the police pulling over a Google car for spying on people illegally. We're going to be going over that some later. Gerald Salente, just a few minutes left with you. Thank you so much. Trendsjournal.com, trendsresearch.com. Finishing up, you were getting into the chain reaction of World War III that could be triggered by unifying the Arabs if there's an attack on Iran. That's why most of the people in the Israeli military know it's not a good idea. You also have the globalists trying to launch a proxy war using Al-Qaeda against uh, 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 Shiites and people uh, in different areas of the Middle East. So the globalists want a civil war, but you're saying an Iran war will bring them together. 
Oh, you're a Bedouin saying, that old Bedouin saying, you know, me against my brother, my brother and I against our, our cousin, my, my brother, my cousin and I against uh, our, our neighbor, and, and all of us against the foreigner. You know, I'm not making this up. This is as old as history. And that's what it will be. It will be a, and the entire Middle East will go up in flames. It's already going up. Look what's going on over in Egypt. Look at Tunisia. Go over to Morocco. Look at Bahrain. Look at Yemen. Look at Syria. If they explode this, it's, it's in flames. It's only a madman would conceive this. And there are plenty of them out there to conceive it. They're called politicians, presidents, chancellors, all of the rest of them, prime ministers, psychopaths, sociopaths, megalomaniacs. Vote. Don't forget to vote. <laughs> What's the time frame, do you think, on an Iran strike? Do you think they're getting closer to that, or is there a way to stop it? You know, I, I just did an interview with an Israeli in the Israeli press. The people there are very concerned. And there's an element in this, and again, you can't put the timeline on. Again, it's all politics, and right now, Netanyahu, 60, over 60% 60 of the people disapprove of him. So they do desperate things because these people, again, they range between psychopath, megalomaniac, sociopath, and, and nobodies that want to be somebodies. They're all power hungry. So I don't know the timeline. The timeline that's being reported is before November 6th. All right. Well, Gerald Salente, thank you so much for spending time with us today. It's been invaluable. I, I wish you weren't right about these things. I wish I wasn't right. But we're here trying to point this out and get some basic sanity. And uh, hopefully uh, sane people will start getting involved. We can take the levers of control away from the madmen. Um, but we have become very decadent like Rome, no doubt. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much for having me on and for all you do. Thank you. There goes Gerald Salente. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs>